four types of dreams and how to tell the difference between them. So type one is a normal dream. Type two is an astral dream. Type three is a lucid dream. And type four is an induced dream. So just to preface, I want to lie the foundation of the universe and context with in which these definitions are working in. So I want you to visualize Google Maps, one plane of coordinates everywhere, right? So I want you to take that plane of coordinates and stack them up into infinite layers in every direction, a whole grid of every dimension, like a big crystal or an external hard drive. So that is our universe. Our consciousness is a point of light that can travel every which way along these lines of memories and experiences of the universe. So that leads us to the first type of dreaming, a normal dream. What is a normal dream? And this is my own definition. I see it as my point of consciousness traveling through the cyclical patterns and memories of my experiences in this lifetime, in this body. So this includes my daily life, my subconscious and conscious fears, thoughts and desires, the content I consume, like social media, games or books, uh, the ideas of other people, the diet that I have because food holds energetic patterns and memories and we consume that and integrate it into our own physical body. It is all of that. So just because it's a normal dream that we normally experience from our day-to-day -day life doesn't mean that you can't become lucid in it. But it can be more difficult just because it seems so normal and repetitive to us. We might not recognize that we're dreaming and break out of it. But I do talk about how I overcome my fear of falling in another video and I'm able to go on roller coasters in real life now. So you can check, out, check that out. So yeah, that is a normal dream. So if you don't like having normal dreams all the time, besides learning how to lucid dream, you have to do the work when you are awake. So this can take the form of professional therapy or journaling or, you know, um, shadow work. So it's like going in for a massage. You have to rub out those knots in your back while all of the unprocessed thoughts and happenings and emotions from your life are like the spiritual knots in you. If you don't understand them, process them, and release them, they get stuck in your energetic field and your consciousness just loops over and over and over again. And that's why you have reoccurring dreams or you have normal dreams that are like your waking life, like your work or something. Like you're not getting paid in your dreams to go to work, but you're there all the time. You got to break out of patterns and do something different. All right, number two, astral dreaming. So the astral realm is a place outside of your cyclical memory. You get to travel outside of it and go wherever you want into different thought forms, thought worlds, and thought bodies. So what does that mean? Uh, I would like to define the context of thought in this conversation and I would like you to see a thought as a cloud or a fish that's swimming through the stream of your mind. So there's fish coming in from every direction, right? And your mind is a meaty, fleshy idea catcher. It's a thought catcher and pertaining to your own individual path, intention, and filters, you can catch a thought and be like, I'm going to do something with this thought and birth it out into the physical realm. You can hold on to it, mull on it, or you can just let it go. Like, what was that? That was a crazy thought. Let's not think about it. And so with that said, if you've ever felt like you have to feel guilty because you think something, don't worry about it. The thoughts aren't yours. It's about what you do with it that matters. And in the physical realm, we're being bombarded by thoughts all of the time against our will through advertisements. You know what? You're trying to skip all the time. Subliminal messaging, programming, all that jazz. So yeah, thought forms. And in the astral realm, we're traveling to all the thought forms that have ever existed since the beginning of time. This includes parallel lives, past lives, other dimensions, different realms, Akashic records, memories of the 
universe. Uh, you can travel all over Earth. You can travel to different planets. You can travel through different people's stories, ideas, everything. So, yep, that is the astral realm. And the next one is a lucid dreaming. Uh, a lucid dream. What is a lucid dream? It is an astral dream, but you are aware of it. You are awake and you realize that you're dreaming so you can do anything you want. You can go wherever you want. You can create anything you want. You can learn whatever you want. The possibilities are endless. But there are dangers to lucid dreaming because you are in the astral realm. You can do whatever you want. So can other beings. So if you're not trained, you can get persuaded and you can get sidetracked really easily. You can fall out of lucidity and you can also just fall back asleep. So in the astral realm, you do not have your body and your body is actually a protective physical grounding layer for you because it has an identity, it has an ego and it is encased in time, which allows us to slow down and reflect and, you know, see our thoughts as separate from each other and decide what we want to do. So that's what a body does for us. It's like a giant training wheel. So in the spirit realm, whatever you feel, whatever your energetic patterns are, are magnified a hundred times fold. This is what I actually think the hell realm is. It's like if you die angry, for example, then without your body, you're just going to be this ball of anger that just cycles through an angry pattern for a thousand years. And it's going to be really hard for you to look outside of yourself and be like, I don't want to be angry anymore. I want to be happy. I want to attract better things to myself. It's really hard when you're just a ball of emotions. Like when you are in your physical body and you stub your toe or when I stub my toe, all I can think about is my pain and my anger and I can't get out of it. And so when you're in the spiritual realm, it's like that, but magnified. So that's where training comes in. When you're in your waking physical body, you got to be aware of who you are, what your intentions are, and be centered in yourself to be able to discern your emotions from who you really are and to be able to transform it. So yeah, that is lucid dreaming, which leads us to the last type of dreaming, induced dreams. So induced dreams are manipulated dreams from an external source. This can be from high tech man-made devices. Um, I haven't had direct experience with them. I'm sure they're being used on me because as above, so below, and I know in my conscious daily life I'm being manipulated through subliminal messaging, propaganda, and advertisements. So it's happening all the time on that level. It must be happening on a secret level. And they have the technology to influence our thoughts, what we see, think, hear, feel, everything. Okay, um, and then there are astral entities that affect our dreams. And these are parasites that feed off of our emotions mostly negative emotions such as guilt, shame, depression, sadness, fear. They love fear and they use it as food energy. So the women in my family have direct experience with these beings. We feel them all the time. They enter in at night when we're sleeping because we're very sensitive and our guard is let down. So we actually hear it as like a howling wind sound outside our window first and there's no wind so it doesn't make sense and they travel in they start at the feet they make you feel cold and uh, I personally don't feel the cold but I just feel a chilling sensation up my spine and the most visceral deep feeling of fear ever in the base of my spine in my tailbone so then they trigger your fear which if you're dreaming triggers visions that attached to the fear emotions and then you have a nightmare and then they eat your fear if you've seen monsters inc from the disney's children movie then you know what i'm talking about it's disclosure so those are the types of dreams and you can also combat that with shields and prayer and all sorts of stuff too you can look at my other video types of protection to protect yourself against that so those are the types of dreams that i experience if you have experienced them too and you work 
and see and understand within those definitions, I would like to hear it. Or if you have your own facets and your own version and definitions, I would also love to hear your version of it. Thanks, you guys.